I'm going to show you how to make a mandala coaster from the mandala quilt block set from Creative Kiwi. For this I'm going to be using a 5x7 hoop, two layers of wash away stabiliser, some masking tape, a selection of threads, a beaker, some pins with, that, with heads on, some um, elastic bands, pencil, my fabrics and batten cut to size, I'm going to be using a 9014 needle in my machine and I've got some sharp fabric scissors to cut my fabric. I'm going to be stitching this in metallic thread today. This is why I've got the beaker, the elastic bands, the pencil and the 9014 needle. We're going to start off by hooping two layers of stabiliser. And then we're going to pin around the top edge of our hoop to keep the stabiliser nice and taut. So take your pin, and any pin with a head will do. Place it on top of the inside hoop, push it through your stabiliser, and then bring it back through and back through your stabiliser again. And that's going to anchor it, and you're going to do that on all four sides. Load your coaster file into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number one and that's going to give you your placement outline for your fabric and batting. Place your batting over the outline and then place your front fabric on top and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two and that's going to secure them to your hoop. As I'm going to be stitching with metallic thread for this there are a few things that I need to do to make sure that it all goes smoothly. The first one is to make sure that I've got a 9014 top stitch needle loaded into my machine because the eye is bigger and it allows the thread to pass through unencumbered. The second thing I need to do is make sure that I've got my machine slowed right down and I've got mine set to 350 stitches per minute. Then we want to make sure that for our thread that the thread comes off of the spool like this rather than like this where it will twist. If it twists it can cause a kink in the thread and then that will block as it goes through the eye of the needle and it can break your needle or you end up with your thread shredding. So the easy solution is to use a thread stand and that's what we're going to make. I've got a plastic beaker here. I'm going to turn it upside down. I'm going to chain together three elastic bands. Place your elastic band, or the middle one, should I say, over the bottom of your beaker. Take a pencil and your uh, spool of thread. Place it on top of your beaker. And then slip the ears of your rubber bands over the top. And when I remove the tape, that will pull off nice and freely. And when I put it um, uh, up to my machine, I'm going to put it on the right hand side and I will run the thread up and through the two pieces of the bobbin winder so that it holds it this out of the way and helps it glide smoothly um, as it feeds through my machine. I've loaded my needle into my machine. I've set my speed. I'm now going to stitch round number three and that's going to do the decorative um, rope like um, stitching around the uh, outside of the mandala. If you want to change your thread colour now is the time to do so. I'm staying with the silver metallic and then we're going to stitch round number four.
And that's all the decorative stitching completed. I hope you can see that. It looks amazing. I love this metallic thread. One of the questions I'm asked quite often is how do you go about putting a, a layer to waterproof your coaster inside it? So I'm going to give you a few ideas. I don't normally bother uh, because I find them absorbent and it doesn't tend to go through, especially with envelope backs. So what I tend to do is I get um, people to keep their isothermic um, shopping bags, you know, the ones that you put frozen food into um, to get it home and keep it frozen. And when they're spent, because usually the handles go on them, I ask them to save them for me. And then I strip out the uh, silvery lining. And this is nice and strong. Uh, it reflects heat. It does everything that you want it to. So I'm going to add that to mine today. So turn your hoop over and place it. And I'm going to place this face down so that it reflects the heat back up through the um, coaster and then tape it in place then you're going to take your two pieces of backing fabric and with the folds towards the middle of your coaster lay it over the top and you're going to overlap them on the front of your hoop and then you're going to tape it in place. I'm just going to cut this batting a little bit because it's in the way. One of the most important places to tape down is here because when your foot travels you don't want it getting caught up underneath the two fabrics. So I like to put a piece of tape as far as I can up to the stitch line just to make sure that it can't get caught up. Then you're going to load a neutral thread into your machine. I'm going to use white so that you can see what I'm talking about but a neutral thread to your fabric is much better and then you're going to stitch round number five and that's going to secure your backing and your lining if you've used one in place so that's all the stitching complete I've removed all the pins and the tape from both front and back of my hoop and we're now going to remove it you're now going to want a nice sharp pair of uh, fabric scissors and we're going to trim around the edge leaving a quarter of an inch seam allowance all around. And now we're going to snip towards the stitch line and create little notches so that when we turn it out the right way it sits all nice and flat And that's notched all the way around now. We're now going to turn this out the right way. And if you push into your seams, it will push them out. And I like to roll mine as well because that seems to set them better than just uh, pressing. I'm now going to press it and I'm going to use a pressing cloth over the top. You can use kitchen roll, towel, anything that you like. It's just so that it doesn't mark your um, thread or your uh, fabric. 
and that's our coaster finished there's the back and there's the front I hope you enjoyed this stitch along if you did please give me a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos as soon as they're published do pop along to Creative Kiwi's Facebook group there's always lots of ideas help and inspiration there for everybody and thank you very much for joining me you'll find a link to this design in the video description below along with information such as where I get my supplies and a load of discount codes for you as well.